it's July 3rd, 2021, and today I'm going to attempt a project that uh, I started back in May. So let's take a look at what I'm going to do. Back in May, I removed the freshwater pump from my uh, Westerbeek diesel engine uh, because it was leaking. And when I rotated it, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, it was pretty clear that the bearings were shot. So I removed this pump. I didn't know how bad my time constraints were going to be, so I simply bought a new pump and uh, installed it. And the idea is that at some point I would tear this one down and see if it's rebuildable. It's possible that the bearings are so far gone that they've scored the shaft. And if that's the case, the replacement shaft from Westerbeek costs almost $500. So it really isn't worth uh, doing if there are other issues. Because to buy all new bearings and seals and a replacement shaft uh, is probably going to cost almost as much as a new pump. So what I'm going to do today is see if I can tear this pump down and find out just how bad it is inside. So let's get started. This uh, top end of the shaft isn't really an issue, but what is an issue is down here on the bottom end. It's been sitting on this paper towel for a while. Uh, in here, these two bolts hold this plate on and inside there is the impeller uh, that pumps the antifreeze. So I'm going to pull that plate and we'll see if we can get the impeller off because it has to come off in order to uh, pull the pump apart. So let's get going. Okay, I'm going to take these screws off. Huh, there. I had loosened them up before. So they're not in there very tight. And then we will take a screwdriver, wrap it in there. Oh boy, that just fell off. <laughs> okay. So that was pretty well shot. You can see where corrosion had gotten in behind the gasket. So it was leaking between the pump body and this plate on the back. And here is the impeller that is just screwed onto the end of the shaft. And I'm gonna have to get some sort of thing here to turn it and, uh, or to lock it in position while I turn the shaft. Let's try that. There's a flat on a shaft so I can put uh, grip on it. See if I can get this to turn fairly easily. Well, not that way. Maybe I can just hold that. Yep, I don't know if my vice grip let go or if here. Oh, sorry if my hand's in the way. Ugh. Well, it doesn't want to turn. I obviously need a pin wrench of some sort, which I do not have in order to turn that properly. Let's see if I can get screwdriver in there and jammed against something and there's a lot of play in that so you can see the bearings are completely gone so somehow I'm gonna have to uh, hold that while I turn the shaft or hold the shaft while I turn that okay I was bending I've made up a couple quick tools these are just eye bolts that I cut off They'll fit in here, and I hope I can get them right down like this. 
and I've got a piece of bar stock to put through, so hopefully I can turn them. Use them as a sort of homemade pin wrench. Right here. Set them right down in there so that they will go far enough to turn. And I think this should go that way. So I'm going to put a uh, wrench on here using the Woodruff key as a stopping point for it. And hopefully it'll turn. We'll see. Oh, I got it. Okay, so I can just unscrew this. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. That's been on there for more than 30 years. So I thought it would be difficult. Okay, step one, take this guy off. And that came off pretty well. And it's got a seal in here. And now, we have to look at getting this shaft out. I think I should be able to support this on a couple of boards and just tap the shaft out. So I'll get set up and we'll see how that goes. Now, ideally, I should use a press to get this out, but I don't have one. So let's see if I can just tap this out through the bearings. Well, it seems like what I'm doing is tapping the wood in. Nothing is moving. Seal off here. There's a seal and a spring. And that goes down to the body of the seal, which seems to be seized on there. I'll give it a few more taps and see if it will go. I'm not sure it's moving. Let's try again. Oh, I forgot to remove a split ring. <laughs> that would have been holding it all together. And all I'm doing is indenting the wood don't seem to be moving the piece. There's a seal body here. That, well, I think it is moving. So, oh, it's moving. And it's out. So here we go. Spread a paper towel out so I don't make a huge mess. Here is the shaft with the seals and everything on it. And uh, see, this bearing is a little worse for wear. And as I rotate it, junk is falling out of it. And up here, I've got another fitting that's not in such great shape. So let's see if I can get this bearing off and uh, then get the lower bearing off. There's a spacer in here. I don't know if that's part of the shaft or not. So I'll try and get this bearing off and then we'll see what happens. I have to get some different wood to block this apart. Okay, I've got this supported now. I'm just going to see if I can tap it down a little bit and knock this bearing off. There we go. And that bear well, the pump is torn apart as far as I can get it. 
and I think I was justified in buying a new pump. Here in the body of it, the uh, outer bearing race here is still in okay shape, but the surface just inside that where the seal would be is really shot. And when we flip it over here, this is the inner bearing race and it's pretty corroded because that bearing had clearly given up. And the uh, surface that the impeller uh, ran close to has actually been scored by the impeller. And if you look closely at the impeller, it's worn here. Because after the bearings gave, developed slop, it was obviously touching the surface and wearing. So uh, the bearing races can probably cl be cleaned up if you want to rebuild the pump. But uh, they may, it may be a little iffy for the seals. The impeller is very definitely worn here, and I would need a new impeller. I need new bearings, obviously. This one is, uh, shall we say, a, a little shot. <laughs> and all new seals. I couldn't get this bearing off. The inner race is corroded to the, uh, to the shaft. And this is the inner race from this bearing here. And it's also corroded to the shaft. It doesn't want to come off. And if you look at these surfaces, see if I can get this closer. If you look at these surfaces, you can see they're very corroded and pitted, especially out here on a seal where a seal sits. And uh, this shaft basically is toast. So I would need to buy a new impeller, a new shaft, new bearings, new seals. And I'm going to go in and uh, look those parts up and see just how much it would have cost to rebuild this pump with new parts. Oh, incidentally, in an attempt to get this bearing off, which is completely shot, as you can see, uh, I couldn't get the wood rough key out of the shaft, so I used my grinder and ground it flush. So I would, if I was, if the shaft was reusable, I'd have to mill a new slot for the woodruff key, which isn't a big deal. I just, I have a milling machine. But basically, uh, the parts alone potentially could cost a little bit. So I'm going to go take a look at the Westerbeek site and see how much the new parts to rebuild this pump would cost. And uh, I'll put that information up. Well, I went online to westerbeak.com since uh, this pump is off a Westerbeak diesel engine and looked up the parts that I need to uh, rebuild the pump. And this is assuming that the pump body itself is okay and can be cleaned up adequately for reuse. I need a shaft and uh, Westerbeak wants 427.60 for that. The woodruff key that I ground down to nothing, they want $7.10 for. The inner bearing is $20.20. The outer bearing is $24.60, so they're really reasonably priced. There's a spacer between the two bearings, which appears to be part of the shaft on my shaft, uh, which is $44.50. Uh, the seal is $108.50. I might be able to reuse my seal, but you know it's a pretty critical part, so probably not worth taking the chance. The impeller uh, to replace my rather worn one is two sixteen ninety. Eh, might be able to get by with the existing impeller, but again, why take a chance? Gaskets are sixty seven dollars, so the total price is nine hundred and sixteen forty. And if I could reuse the impeller, that would only be seven hundred dollars. A complete new pump and gasket set is $963.20. So if I have to buy a new impeller, uh, I'm looking at about $47 less for parts than simply buying a new pump. So overall, I think I made the right decision to just buy the new pump. And given the cost of parts, I don't think it's worth rebuilding the existing pump. Anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, seeing this little tear apart. And uh, as I said, this little exercise has demonstrated to me that I was justified in buying the new pump. 
as painful as it was. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, and don't forget to click that notification bell. See you next time.